Good morning, fellow billionaires. This is Silk5150 with your morning update for Friday, August 28th, 2020. We are here today with the mechanic, guys, and what a fun day it is because we are in a fun house with a bunch of fun house mirrors. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is, guys, look, I'm no joke. We are looking at 1,200 ounces of 3.9's fine silver, mostly from Atmex. This is all from Atmex, but this is a lot of Atmex house brand. You have 10 100 ounce silver bars, okay? And then we have two of these Johnson Matthey RCM bars. Then you can see the seal right there. JM. And there's a serialized number. And of course, there's the bars and stuff. And then here we have the 10 100 ounce bars. Let's go ahead and walk through the gallery real quick. Mechanic, how are you this morning? Hey, I'm doing well. I got to tell you, man, the guys, uh, they love when you're on the show because they, 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 they get tired of hearing me talk all the time. I talk all the time and stuff. And they like when they uh, have something a little different and stuff. And it's funny because I've got people that like the songs, some that don't like the songs. And, you know, so I just try to mix it up a little bit. And today um, I had that opportunity with you. They really, really enjoyed um, having you on last time. We were talking about, you know, how to survive during a, you know, I guess poop hits the fan scenario, you know, how you would, uh, you know, stack up. You're going to get ready for that. And you were telling them, you know, the value of fractionals and stuff. This here is a huge departure from the fractional game. Could you maybe just give me an idea of what made you do a 180 and start heading for these bigger bars here later in your stack? Yeah. Uh, when I started off collecting, uh, it was survival. Mm hmm I wanted fractional stuff so I could buy a loaf of bread and a gallon of gas. But as, as time went on and watching the market, both stock market and, and the silver and gold, is I said, it's coming. And this is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a lot of weight in a hurry. Right. And so <laughs> I started off with with the two in the middle there uh, as kind of my my step off point to see if I could handle it emotionally. <laughs> right, and these are the bars that we these are the bars we purchased for fifty one fifty, correct? Yep. yep. Oh these yes. Are the one. <laughs> and I survived the <clears throat> first purchase and I think uh, two days later I bought another one uh, five of <clears throat> the Atmax and then a couple days after that I bought another five. Well, you know, I got to say, I applaud you for your restraint and not uh, hardly buying any in one in one shot. You know, <laughs> just a monster box at a throw, uh, the equivalent of. And, um, and, and so now, look, you got these bars at first, um, which are absolutely gorgeous in their historical, you know, makeup. You look at these bars and you can see the history and how they were handled or mishandled, as the case were. Um, but they, they're a working man's bar. They were designed to be handled and to be used and stuff. And like we were talking about earlier, I think these are the predecessor to the nicer, rounder loaf bars that were made for Johnson Matthey. And I think Asahi makes those, excuse me, Asahi makes those now. Um, but um, so you've got these at one end, one extreme, and then you've got these pieces of jewelry at the other extreme. Now explain your uh, affinity for these nicer bars. Uh, yes, the... I just, they, they are a piece of jewelry to me. They, they truly are. <laughs> yes, they are. I just love the looks of them. It's just, uh, it, it makes me feel good. Right. Uh, successful. Mm -hmm. And a bright future for what's happening with these, these bars. And, yes. and uh, it, it satisfied uh, an, a need for me to have those, mm -hmm. but all in all, over all of the bars that are there, I wanted, I wanted weight now. Ah, so that that so by these bigger bars, you were able to jump in and just really, really load up really fast. I mean, in a matter of a few days, there they sit. Yes, and you own them; they are yours. And brother, I got to tell you, these are probably a bullion bank in their own right. Yeah, they, they, they're, I can't tell you the excitement they brought to me since they all came home. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, 
if you have the means, you do it. Um, I think we're, every day we're getting closer to possibly prices going up and up and up. Right. It's, it's what I believe. Well, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you know, and we don't even need to be geniuses or anything like that. You know, a lot of my uh, subscribers, they think that, you know, I know this and I know that. But I just know people that know things, like yourself. And so I always defer to you guys to find out what's going on. And, um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, say that I'll even look even uh, you know, further up the pay scale to say someone like uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell to hear what he's saying. And yesterday he said that him and members of the Federal Reserve Bank community uh, uh, went out to local communities and they talked to the people and they said the people said that they wanted inflation and so we're going to get it. What do you, what do you hear when you hear the Fed Chairman say something like that? I, I don't I don't hear them so much as I hear myself going woohoo <laughs> <laughs> this is right because we know that silver and gold um, they are actual barometers for bad economic policy bad economic uh, turmoil that's coming up and if they were allowed to work properly they would be a lot higher in price right now because we know the world is full of economic turmoil right now yes and and it, it even after the election, no matter which which way it goes, it's still going to take some time, right, uh, to get back to what we think should be normal. Yeah, I hope we get there. You think about a decade or maybe longer? Uh, no, a decade. I hope. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a lot of undoing to do. People people need to start being aware of what's happening in our government. Yes. For too many years, we just let it go. Nobody, right. Nobody was involved. Thinking it was going to be fine because yep. we had a bunch of eggheads running the show. Yep, and here we are. And yep. We're fighting for our life right now. We're fighting for our financial lives or for our very existence? Both. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, the thing is, uh, regular people, there's really not too much that we can do. There's really not too much that we can do um, in terms of policy with the exception of voting, Okay. Um, and then, of course, you can always, you know, join your local uh, city council meetings and stuff like that and raise your voice and, you know, and try to get a movement going and stuff like that. But, you know, for years and years and years, I was on every I was in every political camp you can imagine. I grew up Democrat. You know, I served in the military as a Republican. And then here in recent years, once I realized what was going on, I became more of a libertarian because no matter what you look at in policy, no matter what you look at as far as the problems we have, um, why does government go bad? Why do, does education go bad? Why does medicine go bad? And if you look at the general movement and fabric and evolution of these big, big monolithic, you know, um, institutions, it's the money. The money comes in, or the cash, as it were. I, even, I don't even like calling Federal Reserve notes money. I like calling them cash, because this is money right here. Um, these things become oversaturated with a lot of cash, and people's principles get compromised, and... Uh, complacency sets in and people start cutting corners and the next thing you know the quality of the product begins to fizzle out and that includes government so we end up with a lot of bad government policy which leads to um, a lot of degradation in you know uh, local communities and whatnot uh, it just it just just the moral fabric begins to unravel so this is where we're at so we're right in the middle of it right now yeah it's it's gonna and it's it's gonna escalate Yep, it's going to escalate. So, you know, you go out, you vote. You go and you talk to your city councils. You send letters and you make phone calls to your senators and stuff. But the single most powerful thing you can do to try to influence things in your favor is to take control of your financial framework. Yes. Right here. Yes. This is it. And this is the ultimate statement in that. And, and these bars are the ultimate statement in that. So, guys, if you're thinking about stacking, if you've got, like, some big stack budget, you know, like you're getting ready to liquidate a 401k, just know that these bars, bars like these, these are the final statement in stacking. You're stacking these right here, and you are as serious as serious is going to get. Only only person more serious is probably Eric Sprott or Keith Newmeyer. They have 1,000-ounce bars, but they can't even lift them. Um, but these right here, um, you know, we, we've easily got a thousand ounces here, if not more, um, 1200. And, um, and so this is my buddy, the mechanic taking full control of his financial framework, taking full control of his financial future. Because the thing is out of everything that's going on, no matter what we're going to come up against, this is the one area 
where you can exact the greatest amount of control to keep yourself out of trouble. That's okay. Just let it ring. Um, and so... Well, one of, the, one of the things that that emotionally, when you go to purchase, start purchasing these, is you got to get your mindset to where you're not you're not buying anything. You're not going out and buying something so you're apprehensive from spending the money. Right. You're actually just changing the from dollars to hard. It, hard, hard goods. Hard currency, yes. And you will never lose. Ever, no. Ever. No. And, and, you know, it's... It's such a, a good feeling after you get used to it is that you just can't reach into your billfold and within 10 minutes blow your whole wallet. <laughs> exactly. It, it actually slows you down and yes. you have to think. Yes, you have to about, think. Oh, am I going to sell this bar? Yeah. Do I really need to yeah. sell that bar? Yeah. And you become a little more conservative. You do. And you know, it's funny because I tried sticking one of these in the slot machine the other day and it didn't fit. <laughs> I, I couldn't get it in. I was trying to play, uh, you know, uh, Knights of the Pharaoh and uh, I couldn't get this 100 ounce bar. No, but seriously though, but what you're saying to your point, it actually, that works for, um, with your paper fiat cash. Mm -hmm. And it also works for electronic, um, you know, monies, um, you know, stocks and bonds. Now, Robinhood's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite platforms to kind of harp on because, of course, a lot of millennials and young people they love using Robinhood to get in and out of you know IPOs and stocks and all that stuff. Well, because it's so instantaneous and so fast, again, you are less apt to be conservative in your movement or at least the pace of your movements, mm -hmm. having something so convenient. Yes. And, this, and it's the thing of the future. It's the thing of the future. It's just another trick. It is. It is it's just another trick. And it's going to start to unravel. And I, th I hope that a lot of people that are in it <clears throat> begin to see the light and can get out of it in time. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Not to get caught um, in too much of the loss that's going to take place there. Now, I want to put a little something out about myself that I told uh, a subscriber and one of the channels I'm subscribed to. His guy's name is Fred Gar, And me and him, we talk you know, often enough. Uh, me, him, Silver Conundrum, um, good channels. But the thing is, um, I actually keep my ready cash in the form of silver. Did I tell you about that? So, yeah. No, I you did not. Well, okay, yeah. I, I, I told you about the depository. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I got some subscribers, man, who are like, use the depository. I hate this channel. Bye. And they take off. They, they don't want to hear anything about it. Because for them, it's a very private thing to, you know, own silver. And it's private for me, too. But once you get to a certain point, you have to decide, you know, what are your security risks? And so mm -hmm. my security risk got to the point to where I decided depository, partial depository, is right for me. Now, um, having access to that depository, what that allows me to do is it allows me to keep some precious metals on quick fire inside the depository. And what I mean by that is like I have some RCM bars or some generic silver 10-ounce uh, bars that the depository knows if I call and I say, hey, I need some ready cash. I need you to liquidate five of those bars for me. They stop what they're doing. They do it right there. They get the paperwork together, send me the sell order. I sign it, send it back to them electronically. The money's in the bank in 36 hours. Yeah. That's my ready cash. The only thing I need to do is make sure that I know what I want to do 36 hours ahead of time so I don't get caught short. But that's how I keep my ready cash. And I got to tell you guys, the last time I uh, did a ready cash uh, withdrawal, it was right after this last jump to $29. And on the day I went to twenty nine dollars, I uh, I liquidated I think ten bars, and I got enough cash to do a bunch of extra stuff. I bought a new copy machine, and I bought a bunch of stuff that I want to do to help develop the channel. Going to be doing some joint projects here down the road, and um, so it's basically to build a business and then to you know have some fun too. I am going to go to a casino, but I'm not going to try to use one of these bars. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so that's kind of how I keep my ready cash. But even that took thirty six hours, so I had to be conservative about that too. So great yep. point, Mike. Great point. On that mechanic? You know, 36 hours is enough time for you to reflect. Yes, absolutely. And 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 uh, it just elimin eliminates some of the uh, impulse. Yeah, it does. It definitely does. Definitely does. Well, I can tell you, you're not going to be impulsive with these because at eight pounds a piece, you are definitely going to think first before snatching one of these up and trying to <laughs> trying to liquidate it. But um, you know, and for the for for those out there. Um, that argue that, you know, 100 ounce bars are too inconvenient because they're too big and you can't liquidate them. What is your hedge um, with having 100 ounce bars? Do you have other stuff? 
What's that? Do you have other stuff? Yeah, you you videoed that all my my uh, fractional. fractional. But my next purchase will probably go back to one ounce coins. Gotcha. And uh, that this is enough for me for right now. And uh, but I was watching watching the market, looking for the the super deals, uh, and not so much on the coins, not not so much collectibles, just weight. Right. But I I'm pretty sure that right now I fulfilled the fractional part. I I I've, I've done the big bars. Now I'm just going to go back to coins. Now, are you going to kind of satisfy your collectible side or your um, artistic side and maybe get something that's more your speed or more you uh, enjoy? Um, you know, I, if, <laughs> if I want a little pleasure out of it, I just put it all on the table like this, and that's enough to satisfy me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. This right here I think will satisfy anybody. I know it's going to satisfy a lot of our subscribers because... They are just a ravenous bunch of uh, silver aficionados. They love collecting, um, you know, stacking uh, the silver. We have some collectors too. Um, but we know that this is going to be the ultimate, um, the ultimate um, collection point yeah. for the economic uh, turmoil that's out there. You know, I had a subscriber ask me the other day to elaborate on what I meant by how silver can take bad economic energy. And turn it into good purchasing power. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the opportunity to bounce off that, and please, you know, back me up, you know, uh, if if you know if, if I miss something. But basically, the concept is is you have silver here that is an undervalued monetary asset. Now, it has been one for six thousand years. Yes, silver has been used as money longer than gold has, um, and it has been fairly valued for most of that time. You know, ten to one with gold as it comes out of the ground. But now here we are. Uh, in these in this modern era since you know like the 1860s 1870s since the opium wars and um, Silver has been manipulated down in price for a number of reasons industrial reasons um, You know uh, political reasons, you know, and it's just strategic reasons military um, You know because silver is very valuable. It is very useful as the second most useful commodity on earth All right but the thing is its main job is not to function you know, as an industrial metal, its main job is actually to function as a monetary asset, just like gold. And just like gold, silver has the ability to absorb Jerome Powell's hyperinflation that's on the way. It has the ability to absorb threats from China. It has the ability to absorb any kind of political fallout, uh, any kind of natural disasters, anything that happens in the world that puts a strain on countries financially, sovereign debt, that sovereign debt is eaten up by silver in the form of its spot price. Once silver is released to be freely traded, the spot price is going to be way higher than it is now. And that's something that can happen overnight. Should the CFTC change COMEX rules or right. you know trading rules or something like that. So when you see these huge price jumps, guys, in the price of silver, and notice that silver usually outperforms gold these days now that we're on the other side of this manipulation, um, it is due to silver being fed a lot of the economic turmoil out there. Now, probably 95% of it is being held back. Silver is being either hindered or blocked from absorbing these events, from absorbing this energy, but it's gonna, there's going to come a time when they can't do it. And silver's going to be right there, wide open, with his mouth held wide open to eat every single thing that comes its way. And it's going to grow in purchasing power. It's going to grow in spot price. That's denominated in dollars. Once we get beyond a dollar paradigm and the dollar is no longer trusted or it has become a thing of ridicule, silver will still be purchasing power. It will still be money. In fact, I envision a day when you go to the gas station mechanic, you go to the gas station, you'll see um, the first line is a one dollar sign uh, but it's silver mm -hmm. and then below that is a cash price and then below that is a credit price <laughs> at the gas station yep. and for you know um a gallon of gas you know in silver it'll be a gram or something you know maybe or even less or maybe it'll be a tank of uh, a tank of gas for like a silver eagle or something right yeah well another another thing we should watch mm -hmm. and, and it, i kind of use this to to back up uh, to make sure that I'm heading in the right direction. 
but look at the value of our dollar to other foreign currency. Yes. Uh, I happen to pay a lot of attention to Philippine peso. Yes. And it, I, I've watched our dollar going down every every month it goes down mm -hmm. all right but the silver is holding its own at the least yeah yeah at the I least mean, I, I say that yes we know it's gone up right but it's holding its own even if it held its own you're still winning that's the thing i try to tell people you know it's like hey if you're doing bad but your neighbor bob is doing nothing then you're ahead yes yeah. you know yeah. If you're making a dollar a week and your neighbor Bob owes 10, yeah. you're rich. You're rich. You know, that's, that's exactly the thing. It's right. like you don't have to be making these great ridiculous strides to um, to beat the game. And I even tell my subscribers, you know, that 12 ounces to your name puts you 99% ahead of the game. Yep. But, you know, you really want to be 100% of the game. <laughs> and, guys, this right here, this is like 10,000% ahead of the game, just for the record. You don't have to do all that. Uh, it's cool if you do. I mean, you, you can't lose. But my point is, is that, you know, just doing something, being awake, being aware, trying to um, take advantage of what's available to us now is going to make such a big difference later. Oh, yeah. It really is. Did you see what happened to the Turkish lira? You're talking about currencies earlier. You see what happened to the Turkish lira uh, last week? No. Oh. So basically, the Turkish lira now is being devalued again, and um, it went down, you know, some 97% over the last, oh, eh, wow. probably over the last, you know, a year and a half. Yeah, since last February, and um, you know, against the dollar, and so now it's going to be revalued again. And if you remember back in two thousand five, it was revalued from something like one point three five million to one on a U.S. dollar to one point three five. So it was devalued a million times in one throw by the government. And whoever was valued, they had their wealth valued in that currency. They lost, yeah, everything, everything, and it had to start all over again. I, could this happen in the United States? Well, every other currency would have to burn flat first, and then the dollar would have to get there. But trust me, just the road in that direction will be Hades for a lot of people, mm -hmm. all right? But you could play the opposite side of the game. You have silver. Silver's doing the the counter, the opposite of what currencies are doing. And as they become weaker in purchasing power, silver becomes stronger. So what? Milk is $150 a gallon. You cash in one of your silver eagles, you will get milk and a basket of groceries. Yep. That's how that's how it works, you know. And so um, you'll need to uh, be in touch with your LCSs for that. You'll need to be in touch with the depository if you have one or friends or whoever wants to, you know, uh, be part of either that trade or uh, people that didn't listen to you before. But now all of a sudden they have to have silver. Well, give it to them for spot price. Hell, give them a discount. <laughs> silver eagle, 600 bucks. Give it to them for 550. Come yeah. on. You know, you're not you're not you're not evil. Right. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. you know, the best thing you could do is, you know, be an ambassador for silver. I tell you guys about ambassadorship. You know, um, Mike, he knew about, uh, he knew about uh, Mike, the mechanic knew about, knew about silver way before I talked to him. But then at the same time, you've talked to people. About yeah, I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so it's just a casual contact where you spread this message around. And, um, and so you go ahead and uh, you do your ambassadorship. I mean, I've talked to other people, too. Part of my ambassadorship is to purchase for friends if I need to, to tell them where to purchase if necessary. We do it on a channel where guys, you guys help each other out, and you do an outstanding job doing that and stuff. And the best single thing you could do is to warn people. The second best thing you could do is to help them. So we're warning them. We're helping them. We're doing everything we can to get everybody as ready as we can. Because if most of us make it, it won't be that bad. We just will be running things, yep. okay? Which is the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Silver for the people, and people running the government, not you know these suits or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, all right, guys, I think that's going to do it today. Before we go, uh, mechanic, is there anything you want to add? No, just uh, don't take too long. If you're if you're gonna if you're gonna make a move, do it. Just do it. You. You know, in in a few months, you'll be very glad you did. Amen to that, and that's very true. Yeah, guys, anything you can get, get your hands on. Okay, all right. So this is Silver Fifty One Fifty and a mechanic signing out, telling you that just twelve ounces to your name keeps you ninety nine percent ahead of the game. All right, and to go out there, stack, stack, stack. Your stack is not whack unless you don't stack. All right, so keep stacking. All right, guys. Silver Fifty One Fifty will catch you on Monday with the morning update. Take care and have a great weekend.